Hey everyone, today's episode of Humor Hype is in a galaxy far, far away. So today we are gonna take the best parts from multiple Star Wars games over the generations and years and platforms, and we're gonna combine that with mathematical theory and imagination to fuse and morph into the perfect Star Wars game. Let's get started. First up, combat. So one of the most important elements in this game is built around one of the most iconic inventions, weapons, creation in any form of medium ever conceived, the lightsaber. Legendary blade wielded by Sith and Jedi and General Grievous, I guess. Combat needs to be fast, it needs to be furious, and I want to feel like I'm Qui-Gon Jinn or Obi-Wan staring Darth Maul in the face. I want to feel like I'm Luke Skywalker defending the blows against the giant Darth Vader. I need to recapture that magic. And I'm looking at you, Star Wars Jedi Academy, Star Wars Jedi Outcast 2, Kyle Katarn. That first moment, you know, Kyle Katarn, you're, a, you're an old Jedi turned smuggler. You renounce the Force, you put it away. And I'll never forget that moment going in to the Cloud City, all dark around you, and you just, all of a sudden, you see the red of the lightsaber pop up, Sith. You go in, you're running off the walls, you're slicing and dodging, cutting people, pushing with the Force. And then they even expanded that further with Jedi Academy. You could dual wield two blades and Darth Maul style double bladed lightsaber. That is what we need in this game. Taking that combat one step further. Next, even more important than the lightsaber, a few things are. Story. If your story doesn't hold up, if you don't care about the characters, if you don't care about picking up that lightsaber, about obtaining that weapon, about the feeling you get when you pick it up and use it to cut someone down, then your entire game is worthless. I want to feel the blows. I want to feel remorse as a Jedi having to strike people down, and I want to feel anger and hate as a Sith cutting people down. So how, how is this even possible? Take a minute to think about this. Star Wars, okay? Holy crap, that universe is phenomenal. That came from George Lucas's mind and that has touched millions, billions of people around this world. There are so many untold stories that have yet to be told Yet in video games, there are so few great stories. How is that even possible? Let's change that. Let's have some epic tale across the universe, bounty hunters and Sith and Jedi. It's an untapped gold mine just waiting to explode. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic arguably told it the best. And then went back to the beginning, you know, back to when Jedi and Sith were plentiful, back thousands of years before the movies. Star Wars Jedi Outcast told a story about one person, they focused it. We learned about Kyle Katarn and we cared about everything he did. Star Wars The Force Unleashed, love it or hate it, they gave it a shot trying to tie it into the movies. All three of these games have done something different from each other, and they've done something right in their own way. Let's take a little bit from all of them. So here's where we are. We've got that lightsaber combat from Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy. We've got that story thousands of years before with Knights of the Old Republic, singular focus with Jedi Outcast, and even a movie tie-in with Force Unleashed. We need something else though. This universe is big. Tons of planets, tons of weapons, 
tons of species. We need scale. So I like when scale starts small. You start intimate. Get to know where you are. Get to know the character or characters. Survey your surroundings. And then you explode into something massive. I envision Star Wars Galaxies. Oh, that game. That gem of a game. My stories with Star Wars Galaxies made my bounty hunter humble beginnings, starting out on Tatooine. Just doing my quests, you know, killing uh, little sand creatures and Tusken Raiders. I can remember this moment was the most magical Star Wars moment of my entire life. Met a random person like you do in MMOs. I, lo I love that, the Wild West. You just meet some complete stranger. And we don't have speeders yet, but we just start walking on Tatooine. We just go. We just keep going across the dunes, across the mountaintops, killing anything in our way till we look over in the distance and we see it. There it is. Jabba's palace, right there. We just stumbled across it. For the first couple weeks I'm playing this game, just in my small little starting area, just hanging out, you know, really getting in tune with who I am and what I'm doing in this universe until there it is, Jabba's palace. Now when you get there, you have to work your way into that inner chamber. Gotta, you gotta do quests for the doorman. You know, once you please him, he's like, all right, come on in, you know, you've done enough. You go in, you start doing more quests and more quests until you get further and further and further until that final room. We all know the room. You've seen it in Return of the Jedi. When Jabba's there, Boba Fett is standing right next to him, his personal bodyguard, because Jabba's a drug lord. He's got the cash to pay him off. Got the, the band. And just that moment, starting small and going big. Jabba then later sent me on a mission off planet. I had to go gather some resource on some completely other planet. Never forget that moment. So just that sense of mystery and exploration and wonder. This universe, I just want to explore it. I want to go to planet, to planet, to planet coming across new and exciting things, and some Easter eggs, some nods to the original trilogy, even the prequel trilogy, just being a part of this world. Now Scope, this is a tricky thing because Star Wars Galaxies is an MMO, okay? Now I'm not saying for our perfect game to be an MMO because that's very alienating. I want everyone to enjoy this. But what if, what if we create a new genre. Okay, hear me out. This game starts off single player, you know, like Last of Us style, super intense, intimate, single player game for a while. You know, you're doing your thing. You're doing it. You're exploring the galaxy, exploring your planet. But then there comes a time, there, be, there comes a moment when it just opens up the curtain gets pulled back and you're now in a battle, empire style, with hundreds or thousands of other players. But you do it in a way where you can still play your single player game. They're all there, but you're still playing you. You're still doing your mission. And then there are moments, you know, where you go off smuggler style, solo, you play your game alone. So space travel is a huge deal in this universe. You know, Star Wars Rogue Squadron N64 still does it the best. I wanna be on my ship. I want my ship to be a character. I wanna feel like it's mine, like I own it, like it belongs in this universe. I want to be able to smuggle supplies past checkpoints, Malcolm Reynolds Firefly style, and I want to be able to take it into the planet and take down some AT-ATs or use it as a weapon. 
offense and defense. Another victory for Rogue Squadron. So the pieces are coming together on our dream game. Just missing that last piece. This is the hardest piece of all. You cannot program this piece. You cannot make this piece. This is beyond simple coding. We're talking about vibes. We're talking about that magic feeling. You know that feeling you get? When that Lucasfilm logo goes first? Yeah, 20th Century Fox, Lucasfilms, blackness, silence. Cue John Williams, cue scroll up. That feeling in your gut you get anytime you sit down and start watching a Star Wars movie, that magic. Let's get those vibes, man. Let's get those vibes. This game could be magical. The feeling of going to a new world, seeing new species, interacting with new characters, I want a constant sense of discovery and impact. We briefly talked about arcades, I don't remember when, on, on one episode of Huber Hype. But that Star Wars arcade game, it had three levels. You had the attack on the Death Star, you had the Hoth battle, and you had the speeders on Endor. Now, if you beat all three of those levels, then you got the fourth bonus level, which was in the next assault on the Death Star. This game captures the vibe perfectly. When you duel Darth Vader, you have your joystick, you know, getting the arrows, like block, block, dodge, attack. The visceralness of Darth Vader in this game, the tension is palpable. He's breathing. He's bearing down on you. Each swing feels like a Mack truck just hitting down. You got Boba Fett flying over Tatooine, reflecting his laser blast. Everything about this vibe in this game captures the essence of Star Wars perfectly. But it's not enough. Because that has already been done. There's no retread here. It's just taking iconic moments from the movie. We don't want to do that. We want something new. Again, this is Star Wars. The possibilities are endless. You can do anything you want. Anything at all with this property. You have magic, the force. You have swords, you have guns. You have any alien race on any planet, anywhere in the universe. The limit is your imagination. And unfortunately, budget. So in conclusion, the pieces are in place. We've got the lightsaber combat from Jedi Outcast and Academy, taking it to the next level. You know what? Here's a thought. Hire Platinum Games to just design you lightsaber combat. That's it. You have that entire studio working on one thing. Lightsabers. Next up, you hire Naughty Dog to craft you a tail like no other. Pulling from the likes of Knights of the Old Republic, Jedi Academy and Outcast, and even the Force Unleashed. Next you have Scope. Looking at you, Blizzard. You've done multiple planets. You have World of Warcraft. You have created this massive world. Hire you to make the world. It's a dream team. Lastly, vibes. Well, can't hire anyone for that. That just needs to come naturally. And I think by putting all of these pillars in place, 
it will. It will come, it will rise from the intentions and the good vibes and the creativity to create the perfect Star Wars game that every single person wants and deserves. So that's it. Again, I'm still in China. Been here for weeks. Just lost somewhere. Like, who the hell knows? Probably in some back alley still, drinking some tea. I hope I'm safe. I'm hope I'm alive. When I get back, I promise to do something special and uh, I will address multiple comments from the episodes uh, where I was away. So I'm at Michael P. Huber. Tweet me your thoughts on the most epic franchise ever, Star Wars. What kind of game you would want. Let your imagination and creativity run wild. Uh, it's unfortunate about Star Wars 1313. That game looked epic. And I know Amy Hennig is working on a Star Wars game, so maybe that might be the one that we all want and deserve. Let me know. It's time for Huber Scoop! Who says the summer is for going outside? It's for gathering your friends, getting inside, and playing some co-op games. So Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3, I'm looking at you. Grab a buddy, bust some heads, and go through these games all to the beat of one of the greatest soundtracks of the 16-bit era.